Hello, welcome back to Tony Dock Station. In this video I'm going to cover part one of Track Lane. So in my last video, I spoke to you about sort of like more of a layout update and showed you the, uh, the beginnings of the branch line uh, using the Pico Bullhead track. So I'm just gonna sort of make this a video of showing you how I'm doing it. So obviously in the last video, I showed you that I'd already completed the, uh, the branch line from the points halfway. I mentioned that the curve I've kept as one solid piece I haven't broke it up, but then on this straights so I put it into scale 60 foot sections and join those up with the rail joiners. Um, you can see I've left the gap there for the uh, traditional clickety clack sound and also to allow from, for some expansion. Um, because I've got basically one set, uh, sorry, one piece cut into sections. I am going to be soldering those joints um, and I know I'm talking about expansion and stuff and soldering will be a bit of a problem for that but it's pretty warm up here these are at maximum expansion um, so I've left a small gap in there um, but soldering is going to be important for uh, conductivity um, otherwise I'm going to have to wire each of these individually which I don't particularly want to do um, so those are going to be soldered on those rail joiners there and also because some of them are just a little bit loose where I had to loosen them to get them in because they are very fiddly um, so I might minimize the gaps just a little bit more but other than that that's what's gonna happen with those so I'm going to talk you through what I'm doing here so you can see I've already laid down a layer of copy decks there um, I've just literally laid that there before starting the, uh, the camera up um, and that is, we're waiting for that to go tacky and then I'm going to be using the rest of the uh, DC Concepts power base so I'll put a layer of glue on this, wait for that to go off, wait for this to go off and then we'll put them down. So I've got that all weighted now, um, got to wait for that to go off. As I said, it's pretty warm up here, so hopefully it won't take too long while I'm doing that, waiting for that to dry rather. I'm going to uh, crack on with soldering these rail joiners. Okay, so the next thing to look at while we're waiting for everything to uh, to dry is uh, the point that's going in here. Obviously, I've already laid the cork and it's already copied X down. Um, and because it's the ball head, I bought one of the new ball head large radius turnouts. Now, this has got the new Unifrog on it, which, having read through it, basically means you don't have to make any adaptions to the, uh, the blades underneath. It's already done. All I've got to do it's connect up the frog wire to the point motor. So I literally can just lay the point, I haven't got to do any soldering underneath, etc. Which is quite handy. So all I've got to do is drill the holes and then that'll be ready to lay. Okay, so the point motor, uh, sorry not the point motor, the actual point itself, um, as I say, it's got the, the one frog wire there, the stuff underneath, sorry, I don't know if you can see that, it's all ready wired, I don't need to do anything at all, it's ready to run DCC. So I've laid it, marked out exactly where I want it, um, and I've put some corners so I know exactly where it lays back. I've marked where the frog wire needs to go, and I've put a little pilot hole for the centre of where I want the point motor, point motor hole to be. So, headphone users beware, drill's going in. I'm just going to quickly drill 
the pilot hole, or the main hole, sorry, for the frog wire. And then all I've got to do now is quickly change the drill bit. I'm using a 12mm drill bit for the hole here for the point motor. Uh, I know roughly there I've got my part of the hole, so and that's the centre. And I'll do this gently so I don't completely shred the uh, the cork. exactly why I use um, 12 mil hole just because there's gonna be some margin of error there you can get away with four or five mil hole if it's lined exactly precise but my point motor alignment tool that I mentioned in the last video won't work with the um, new points these sleepers are a bit wider so it, it, it won't fit along um, so I've had to do this one the old school way with a with a measuring stick. Okay, so that's now completely done. As I say, I've got the 12mm hole there to allow for some room of error and the hole for the frog wire at the point. I line this up. Hopefully you can see, I don't know if you can, but I've got enough throw for any direction that point wants to go now. So all I've got to do is um, get this sorted, this should be dry now, and then lay the rest of the track up to the point. Okay, so this should have uh, had enough time to dry now. I'll just take all the weights off. The moment of truth. And yeah, they're down pretty good. So these have just got the protective film on them, so get rid of those. Just got to find a corner and then come off, not too difficult at all. But for these things, for how cheap they are, it's, I think it's definitely worth doing on almost any incline that you think even looks a bit steep really, I think. Because once it's down, it's down, it has no impact on sorry no negative impact at all there's only a positive so I shouldn't how cheap it is I think if you've got any incline I think it's questionable I think it's worth putting on um, it's, it won't affect any other trains that haven't got the magnets underneath but all you've got to do is just stick a magnet underneath and it's there ready to go so what we've got to do now is get this last piece of ball head track and uh, work out how much we need so that's gonna be about there Come down to this point here. Get the trusty pin. Make sure I've got that marked off. And give it a cut. Okay, so I've got the piece cut, but the one thing with this um, power base is, as you can see, it's got two holes drilled. Oh, sorry machined out in, in every piece so those are for where your dropper wires would go through so now I've got the piece cut I line it up to where it's going to be level with the uh, the rails there and then find two holes that I want to drop it through so I want to drop through here I just make a mark where they are on the rail now I know I can take that away and solder it, the wires, and they'll be exactly where I need them to be. Okay, so I've got the track here. I've got my two marks there. And as you can see, they're directly underneath a sleeper, which is uh, always typical. So I'm gonna to have to cut that sleeper out just to make sure that I can get the, um, the wires soldered in. So just make those cuts underneath the web in here. I'm going to do this off camera so I can see it. Okay, so I've got the uh, sleeper missing there. Now I know that uh, directly underneath there is where I need to solder 
the wires. Now, remember which way is which, because you've got a wire, obviously your rail round, so I know that the way I'm doing my layout is this rail will be the, uh, the black wire and this is the red wire. So, and now I know that that's the black and that's the red. And with the wire, make sure you strip a bit off the end. And it only has to be a very small amount. I mean, that is literally five mil, maybe less than five mil. And same again there. And then tin these and uh, solder them on. Okay, so with the soldering all done, the holes drilled for the dropper wires, all that's left to do is glue this and then glue the back of the track, lay it down and then That'll be it. Okay, so excuse the shaky hands, but that uh, took a bit of effort to get those um, rails into those sleepers there. You'll notice as well that I haven't done the, um, the remainder in the 60 foot sections because I would have had less than 60 foot at the end so it would have been just one more 60 foot and then a small section. So I've just done one last track uh, piece before the, uh, the point there. Um, it's all weighted down and that will dry now. And it's best to do it while the glue is still wet which I learned from Everard Junction. He said to do it while it's still wet so you can still adjust the track rather than letting the glue go off um, and then it sticks and moves down because obviously I'm trying to get the rails into the sleepers and then get it all lined up. So that's all done now. And the uh, last bit of track is in. The next thing to do there is literally just connect the, the point up um, which I'll do with um, isolated fish plates because all my points are going to be isolated and self-contained and then I can't do the last bit there because that's the only bit of ball head track I've got left I'm waiting for the postman to deliver the next bit um, and then I'll add the point on and then that will pretty much be it so hopefully it's just this little short video hopefully explaining how I'm playing the track and the reason I've shown you on how to do it with the ball head is because it's already sleeper spaced whereas with this I've actually got the space to sleepers so with this bit then done it obviously attaches to the geometry of the point there and then the rest of it will all sort of fall into place now so that's what I'm sort of going to be doing the only difference with the rest of the track will be spacing the sleepers um, and uh, obviously over the other side a little bit more point work and then when I get to here again I'm waiting for more track to turn up in the post that'll be uh, another story but Again, it's not a unique technique to me, it's working for me. Um, so yeah, just sort of showing you what I'm doing, but again, I'm not taking credit for the actual method or technique. Um, yeah, so hopefully this has been just another little short video for you to enjoy. The next video will be serious, serious track work. So thanks again guys, um, I'll see you all soon.